Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK, and in this video we're going to be looking at painting this sculpt ready for a games engine. Now, in some of the other tutorials, we have looked at how to UV map this um, to get it ready for exporting with a sculpt, and in another one, we've looked at how to export for a games engine. Once you are happy that you are using a model that the sculpt works in the games engine then you are ready to paint it's always worth checking first because if you need to adjust the uv map any then you need to do that before you start painting otherwise you can uh, mess up all of your wonderful texture work that you are about to create so if i just have a quick nip into my 3d uh, uv edit mode you can see i've got my uv here it's not necessarily the nicest looking of UV maps certainly when it comes to the head area okay and that's because of what I did to make the sculpt work but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some really nice tools that are in body paint 3d which means that that won't necessarily matter for you so if I go to my body paint 3d paint layout it makes life a little bit easier for me okay and with my object selected I need to go to my paint setup wizard so I'm going to click this so it's the object I want to set up which is this and then I click next now I can choose to recalculate UVs which means it'll go away and sort out my UVs again for me but as I have them in a nice order that I am happy with then I'm going to untick that because I don't want it to um, mess with that at all and then click next and it says what do I want to do um, and what do I want to use so I want to make sure that I have a color in there if you want to add any more detail in then you could potentially use bump on there as well but I'm going to use reflectance so the two I'm going to use is color and reflectance they are going to be my two channels okay once I'm happy with that I just click finish and it goes away and it creates my materials for me so I can close that and if I look at my materials you can see that we've got my material here ready to go with its color channel and its reflectance channel and my object there has you know its sculpt data so let's look at our layers there so if I just go to my color channel okay that's the color channel that's the ed channel that I will be editing even get me words out and if I look at my layers then it starts with this gray layer here now you can also flip to your texture here you can see you know a little bit more information when you know you can see the UV map over the top and that might help you a little bit later on now I'm gonna make this a very simple paint to start with so my background color I'm simply going to use a fill okay and then I'm gonna choose my color which is going to be a sort of darkish green so he's going to be a very plasticky dragon and there you go that instantly applies that color all the way across and if I look at my layers there we go it's got that on there with no problem whatsoever then what I want to do is I'm going to add in some purple okay because I'm going to do his um, chest and wings and sort of ears in a, a different purple so I'm going to create myself a new layer so that I'm working on that again as I've done with sculpting if I ever need to change it or do anything with it then that's what I can use so I'm going to use my paintbrush tool I'm going to pick a purplish color uh, maybe a little bit lighter than that okay and that's what I'm going to be using for the chest area now as I mentioned earlier sometimes when you go across the UVs it's going to be really warped and you can see what this is doing in in some weird ways so if I go over one way it will stop and then it will pick between the two different UVs um, and it might have a little bit of a jump between the two but body paint 3d has a lovely tool called enable well, projection painting so that's what I'm going to be using um, because what that does is it allows you to paint from your projection that you are you know the angle that you are currently looking at so I click that and it will just process it it will just down the bottom left hand corner you can see it's it's figuring out the object which means that I can now paint so just making sure you know that I'm using my colors and if you look at the layers I'm on a projection paint layer and basically that calculates the angle that it's working at and then we'll apply it to the layers underneath when I am done so I'm just on a standard brush uh, standard pressure um, and then I can just 
paint this over and I just add that in and it gives me this dark sort of purplish look underneath. Then if I change the angle you can see I've, I've managed to accidentally get in there but I can delete that in a second and it's applied to that now. So the moment I untick projection paint if I have a look at my color layers you can see that it's added that in. Oh, I've got a bit of issues in there as well. So I'm just going to go to my erase tool and I'm just going to delete the bits that I don't need because I was a little bit uncareful with how I did that. There we go. So turning that back on and I can adjust my angle, turn on projection painting again. It will process. So you do need to be a little bit careful with how you add this in and what you have in the background when you do it. So because this is a child's toy, I'm not too worried about, you know, a lot of overlap and a lot of, you know, incredibly clean lines for what I'm doing. But body paint, oh dear, uh, has those uh, the ability of, of doing that if you want to. Uh, you can increase and decrease the brush size and hardness so that you can get you know much crisper edges if you particularly wanted to. So if I just you know allowed the projection painting on you can see I've got you know harder edges. Oh no it helps there we go put that back to hard edges and it's much more pixelated which isn't necessarily good for what I'm doing at the moment but nonetheless, you have got that options if you want to. Uh, and you can use the airbrush, which will allow you to layer things up as well. So if I did that and I decreased, increased my brush size, you can decrease the pressure. You know, you can sort of see that you can layer things up very gently and then you can bring out that color a little bit more if you want to. There we go, and I've I've got my purple there, which I'm quite happy with. Maybe I'll you know edit a little bit, but again, you know, it's entirely down to you how much you want to add in detail-wise. Looking at my layers again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another one because I want to do the eyes. So there you see that I can copy and paste the texture and I can flip horizontally and then I can you know sort of align it where I need it to go and then if I apply that transform in I now have that on there and it's simply using the selection and copy and paste and there we go you know it, it saved me a little bit of work it might need a little bit of cleaning but those little tools are really helpful for you to just you know move around and add in extra detail and save yourself some time and then I'm just going to look at my shape I'm going to create a circle make it black and I'm just going to add this straight onto the um, white texture maybe I should have uh, done that before I added one or the other but uh, before I copied and pasted but now if I just, you know, have a look, there he is, my little dragon, happy and smiley, looking slightly cross-eyed. Um, maybe I will just increase the size of that just a tad. There we go. So, I have my little painted dragon. Um, there are some lovely other tools that are useful for the... Um, you know like giving in shading and things like that which I've found really quite nice and they are like the dodge and the burn tools over here so if you've got one of your layers selected for your color channel um, say like the purple one uh, you could do a, a copy of it if you wanted to just before you start editing it but for this instance I think I should be fine so if I just select the dodge tool and I just move around and slowly work over some of my detail you can see it gets lighter so that is the dodge tool and it just gives you a little bit of more tone 
if you want to be working on it again you can increase and decrease its pressure so if you want to be able to work up to that rather than it being quite so strong to start with and it just gives it a little bit of a highlight like someone's painted on for this one a little bit of the detail as well to make it overemphasized and then you've got the burn tool which works the other way so I'm just going to decrease its pressure straight away which will make areas darker so if you want to you know darken out areas around the front and then have gradients in maybe I'll decrease that pressure even further so that you're getting a little bit more tone across your characters or objects or you want to add in some wear and tear you know make something that so it looks like it's more in shadow you know this is the sort of stuff that makes life really easy and kind of fun to be doing painting in as well so that was quite fast in just adding a little bit more detail in and if we have a look at our texture now you can see how this has applied it so the texture itself over the face as you've seen is really quite messy um, or at least the way I have done my UV map isn't as pleasant as some people would have wanted it I know but it stretched that eye out over the appropriate polygon so that it looks good in the view which is basically where you're going to want it and it carries on and it maps its way across and you can see we've got this tonal gradient starting to come in what I might do is just add the blur in just so it starts to blur those pixels together so that it isn't quite such a, a sharp change in colors okay and you can do the same to you know the background layer as well if you want to so maybe I'll add some dodging and burning into there and I shall do it relatively fast and I'll speed this up Okay, and that just gives me a little bit of extra detail. Um, one of the other layers that we do have is the reflectance layer. And if we have a look at that, it's completely black, which means there is zero reflectance whatsoever. So there is no form of specular. It is going to be a completely matte color. So I'm going to use one of the um, fill tools, and I'm just going to give it a little bit more outside of that and it will just make it ever so slightly lighter which means that there is a general sort of sheen to it now I mean you could increase that quite a lot and you'll find that you know you can see that he gets quite plasticky but I'm going to keep that relatively low because I've got a nice little thing that I want to do um, which is I want to kind of make it look like he has sort of sparkles or glitter a little bit when he's in his games engine and I'm going to use my reflectance channel to do that so again create myself a new layer um, because this is the layer that I'm going to want to be using making sure that my colors are, are well up and then I want to look at some of my um, potential preset brushes that I can be using now you can see that we've got this you know little display here of a variety of things that we could use um, and one of the things I want to be working on is adding in jitter and it adds out some of this um, it, it spreads it out and you can choose um, its spacing so you can see how many little dots it's got and its, its pressure and opacity so I'm going to increase the pressure but I'm going to decrease the hardness so it gives this nice speckledy look instead and if I was to use a brush size that big, then it would go absolutely crazy. So I'm going to lower that down so that it is quite tiny. Um, and then if I just do that, oh, I think I've made that too small. There we go. Okay, so I haven't quite got those settings yet. So what I want to do is spread those out even further. And it gives that nice jitter. Um, you can decrease or get rid of there we go the stream so I didn't want the airbrush in but I have on there getting these little speckles on the inside that kind of looks like he's been 
speckled with something shiny. Or I could use it in the text view. Okay, there we go, that's a bit better. And that means that I can add that in and brush that across and get that look that I am after. That gives him some nice speckles across the front, which will kind of come across as nice little shiny areas when he's in a games engine. Okay, so once you are happy with this, okay, what you would need to do is you'll need to export out this as an FBX, but first we'll need to make sure that we've got our textures saved. So what I have a tendency of doing is once I've done with my model, I will save it out, okay, and I will save my textures as a copy. I will save them somewhere that I know is going to be useful, and I will save them as um, a PNG. I find that that works quite well. Um, I know that Unreal doesn't use um, TIFF files very well. So I'll use PNG, click OK, and then on my desktop I will create a new folder and I will call it uh, Dragon sort of Ready. And I can save out my reflectance and I can save out my color as well. I suppose I could have done save all textures, save texture out. Again, PNG, Ooh, can't find it. And they are my two colors. Uh, you'll need to bake out your object as well. So in a similar way that we did in the other video. So if I just go to my sculpt and then choose my base object, I shall just bake out and I shall make sure that my texture is in the same place. So bake sculpt normal is going to be there and click bake. And then as I did in my other one, I take my object, I move him across, and then what I'll do is I will go into that texture that it has created. It's created the normal map texture you see, but under the color, what I shall do is I shall find my dragon ready and I shall put my color texture in there. I won't say anything to that. Um, and then my reflectance as well. Then I shall add in my reflectance texture for that. And then I shall export the FBX. Choose the folder on my desktop, drag and ready. So I've got everything in one folder that is to do with this. I shall choose my options, selection only, normals, textures, click OK. That exports. Now if I go to my desktop, you can see that I've got one folder that has everything in, which would allow me to drag and drop it into a games engine. So let's just have a quick look at that. So in my games engine, if I just go to my finder and I drag and drop my FBX, it imports the package as it did before. It wants me to fix the normals, which I do. And there in my games engine, I now have my little dragon and give it a second again and the normal map should ping in. There we go. And we've got our color channel in there, but the one thing it doesn't process at the moment properly is our reflectance. So under the materials, okay, what you might need to do is just drag and drop that reflectance channel back in. There we go. And then with my object selected, I can drag and drop my reflectance there into my metallic. And then you need to make sure that you select your texture and you change it from texture alpha to from grayscale. And then click apply and you'll see that we now have our dragon with his little sparkly, sparkly bits on his chest. Okay with his sculpt data and his textures. Okay, I hope that was a useful tutorial for you. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out blog.maxon.co.uk